uh, I am sitting here, I am sleeping, I am traveling, and it was suddenly, sudden I, suddenly I got the experience that uh, the I is all there is. And it's like the eyes unfolding in everything. And um, it was a very, although I, I, I have heard this very many times before, I suddenly had the experience yesterday. But today <laughs> I got more confused. And, and uh, the experience from yesterday, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it, 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 it was a good experience or not. Uh, and that is because you make, um, you separate, I think, the knowing from what we know or you separate the awareness for, from what we um, experience in a way. And to begin with, yes. Yes, and I suddenly got a bit confused, and now I, I'm not sure <laughs> uh, how, to, how to experience uh, these things. Yes, so for, for one who is lost in the drama of a movie, it is legitimate to, to conceptualize the screen behind the movie. Yes. Or someone is terrified. Uh, uh, they're watching a thriller and they're terrified by the content of the movie. And so their friend says to him, no, just, just be aware of the screen behind the movie. Yes. It's legitimate. It is a legitimate distinction to make the screen and the movie. Later on, we realize that all there is to the movie is the activity of the screen. So yes. later on we'll collapse the distinction between yes. the screen and the movie. But okay. for one who is lost in the movie, yes. and by analogy, for one who is lost in experience, yes. lost in their thoughts, feelings, activities, and relationships, it is legitimate and I would suggest necessary okay. to begin with okay. to separate the knower from the known and to posit the knower behind experience. Why? Because the known, that is thoughts, feelings, sensations, perceptions, activities, and relationships, are the foreground of our experience. And in response to that, we posit the knower awareness in the background of experience, just like we posit the screen behind the mm -hmm. image. It's not really behind. But it is legitimate to do so when the focus of our attention is on the content okay. of experience. Yes. It's like taking a step back from your thoughts and feelings to the presence of awareness behind them. Yes. Uh, for me, it's easier just to call it I. Okay. Is that, it okay? <laughs> that's fine. That's yes, fine. Yes. I use lots the, of different the, names for it. Like the only thing that that is, it's... It's the what is, is the I. Is. That yes. was my experience yesterday. Okay, so, so that's true. So in, in just the same way that the screen is not just behind the movie, but, yes. the, but is the entirety of the movie. Yes. In, yes. in other words, the movie is the activity of the screen. Likewise, mm -hmm. we first take a step back from the objects of experience to I, the consciousness that I am. And then in time, as the week goes on, we will see more and more that what we, what we call experience, thinking, feeling, sensing, perceiving, mm -hmm. acting, and relating, is the activity of, or a play of, mm. I consciousness. Yes. yes. So that I consciousness is the only thing, which is mm. of course not a thing, <laughs> that is present mm -hmm. in experience. Yes. Uh, all experience is a, is a coloring of consciousness or the activity of mm. consciousness. Mm. Just like everything that takes place in your dream is the activity of your own mind. From the perspective of the character in the dream, there seems to be a multiplicity and diversity of objects and others. That's how it seems from the perspective of the character in the dream. They, yeah. The character in the dream feels I am a separate self, and all these objects and others exist independent of me. When you wake up, you realize, oh, the whole thing was the activity of my mind. There was, no, there was nothing there, yes. no thing, no stuff there, other than the stuff of my own mind. Yes. 
Yes. The only stuff present in my dream was the activity of my own mind. Mm. So likewise, I'm suggesting, and, and you're also suggesting, that all there is to your experience is the activity of I, or yes. consciousness. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, maybe what is confusing me a little bit is the use of the word knowing. And I think because it has a, a special connotation, because I'm working, you know, ma very many years of school and working in university, the, yes. the word knowing is a bit, okay. it's a bit difficult. I'm glad you bring that up now. Mm. It, it's very important to, to mm. understand. When I say knowing, I'm not referring to conceptual knowledge. Mm. I'm referring to knowing in the sense that when you tread on your cat's tail, the cat knows the experience of pain. It doesn't conceptualize the experience of pain, but it knows it, it feels it, it is aware of it. it, is, it that's the way I use the word knowing. Now, you could say, well, why do you use the word knowing, given that there is this possible ambiguity? Why don't you just stick to the word awareness? Well, the answer is because awareness is a noun, and therefore there is a subtle suggestion in the word awareness that what yes. is being referred to is some kind of a subtle object, a thing. Yes. So I like the word knowing because it's a, a verb. It's yes. not. It's not a thing. Yes. It, it, it's less objective. Yes. So, uh, it, it, so when I, when I use the word knowing, it, it's the it's the it's the knowing element in all experience. And in fact, all there is to any experience is the knowing of it. Yes. It's just a very difficult word. Okay, for well, if, me, if, if it's if, difficult for you, yes. I use, as you've already noticed, lots of different words yes, yes, yes. to uh, um, refer to the same thing, which mm. is not a thing. And there are two reasons for, for doing that. One, because some people have associations from yes. their early life or their previous spiritual tradition that, that makes certain words difficult. For instance, Buddhists don't like the word I, mm. uh, or they don't like the word self. Mm. Um, recovering Catholics don't like the word God. <laughs> um, um, I, I'm a closet Sufi, so I love the word God. Yes. Uh, um, yes. So, so I use all, all these words. Um, scientists tend to, to to like the word consciousness. Yes. So I use all these different words to, to yes. hopefully so that there's at least one word that resonates with you. Yes. That's one reason for using lots of different words. The other reason is that. What all these words refer to, I, consciousness, God, self-aware, being, awareness, etc., what all these words refer to cannot be described in words because words have evolved to describe the objective content of experience. Yes. Yes. So uh, one of the reasons for using lots of words is to subliminally yes. uh, convey the message that actually no word really describes. Yes. We're just using each word provisionally, and I tend to use whichever word is appropriate for the particular yes. question or conversation that we're yes. having. So sometimes if I'm trying to evoke more a kind of feeling understanding, I'll use the word God yes. or, or presence. If I'm wanting to be more clinical, I'll use the word consciousness. If I'm mm -hmm. trying to refer to something that everybody knows, I'll use the word I. Yes. So I, I choose, I don't choose them, They're, it's spontaneous, but, but mm. the, the words are, are, I try to find whichever word is appropriate for the... Yes, and that's a good thing. I, uh, for me it's um, maybe easier when you use uh, more poetic words, then, uh, it, then every, everything becomes more easy to 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 yes. experience. And so therefore you just also have to God is a good... Okay, yes, but you have to yes. remember that I'm... I'm yes. Or well, now I'm speaking to you, but 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 there are yes. 170 of us. Yes. <laughs> um, some people love it when I speak of the heart and, yes. and of God, but there will have been some people last night that when I mentioned the word God, that probably felt a little disappointed or, or a little some some resistance. So um, you have to. Each of us has to. If there's a word that is particularly loaded for us, if we can't stand the the G word, that then you have <laughs> to, you just have to um, cut me a little bit of yes, slack yes, and translate yes. the word into your preferred language. So, because it's, and I'm not implying that you're doing this, but we don't want 
to be talking about semantics here. We don't, what we're talking about is not semantics. We don't want to get uh, bogged down discussing the details between the word consciousness and God. No. We just, just, just yes. uh, bear with me, yes. understand that I'm speaking to, to yes. lots of people. We all have our different, different words that we feel resonant with and others yes. that we have some resistance yes. to. And if you don't, <laughs> don't like the word consciousness, just translate it into your preferred. Mm. Thank you. It was a very helpful answer. Mm, thank you.